Well, welcome to Fusion again. I know you've heard that lots, but this is uh, an amazing event. I love being at Fusion because it's a time where we are filled up. And today's message was especially um, timely. I feel like just, you know, we got, we got really hit on hard last night, and then today we really got lifted up. You know, both, both are good. Both are needed. And uh, this morning I was, I was just kind of slipped, slipped out, and I said, Lord, that is just a great word because a lot of times children's workers are like Martha, so I hope you're receiving a lot. My name is Doreen Heater. I'm the children's pastor at Northwest Family Church. I've been serving in children's ministries for over 25 years. Uh, my alma mater is Northwest uh, Bible College, which became Northwest College, which is now Northwest University, and it still is my alma mater, and I love Northwest University and um, all of that, and uh, graduated in, oh, do I even say that? I graduated in 89 and went right into children's ministries. Actually, my first position was youth pastor and children's pastor, and um, I love youth. I love youth working with children, and I really believe in it. It's, it I'm passionate about that. Today, we're going to be talking about missions, and we're going to review visit some of uh, the basics, uh, not too long on the basics, but also just maybe perhaps today uh, rejuvenate your heart a little bit and give some more clarity to missions because it has changed so much even in the last five years um, how we can focus and work on missions. So let's pray and, uh, and then we're going to dive right in. God, thanks so much for being with us today and Lord, we receive from you. We receive, Lord, the challenges. We receive, Lord God, your love and we receive God. God, um, good things from you, Jesus. You want to cause us to grow. You want to challenge us. You don't want us to stay the same. You are, you are a change agent, God. That is who you are. And so I ask today that you would change us, Lord. Help us to receive and to not be the same, Lord. Not to accept the status quo or uh, to stay in the, in the valleys or in between our comfort zones, Lord God. Help us to get out of that. Help us to look up, uh, Lord God, to where you are leading and where you are already working and help us to join you there, I pray. In God's name, amen. Amen. Teaching children about missions is more than about holding a globe and um, more than uh, showing them a little bit about the world because that is important, but it is not uh, just foreign missions that I'm going to address today. I believe that missions is at the very heart of God. Missions is what God... Um, God designed from the very beginning of the world. When man got lost, he went on a mission to find people and to redeem them back. And that is really what we're to be about. God has uniquely designed children who believe in Jesus to partner with him in this great work, in that mission of God. And they have the simple faith that God requires, eagerly craves involvement, and they long to commit to the cause. They want to jump on board and do what we're passionate about and what God's passionate about. But we simply need to give them the opportunities to commit to the great purpose um, and help advance God's kingdom. And our challenge is to help children understand God's plan for people. What 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 was he what were we created for and what have since they have found Jesus what is their mission what are what is their calling to do um, and it's also our challenge to help children understand God's plan for the people of the world and what is the current progress of the gospel hey there's seats right down front come on in come on and join us won't interrupt me and we need to provide opportunities for children to be prepared and to respond to the mission of God as well as missions work. We need to help them see and reach, uh, help people to reach out and find the Savior. And did you know that 70% of those that are on the mission field were called as children? So that, that speaks highly of the children's worker, that we are a part of what we do, invest in the future of missions. So that's very important too as well. We need to inform and inspire children to be missionaries around the world and across the street. I find both to be important. And we're going to dive into some areas and some ideas that I have for teaching and promoting missions within your church and in the children's lives um, which you minister to. But in order to lead our children in missions, we need to do a couple things. So I want to come over here and whoop, one more. Would you a little far behind. That, that would be awesome if you want to do that. Thank you. You have to sit by it. Maybe I don't know babysit it. But the first thing we need to do is pray. 
Um, and I, that's not a trite thing. That is a very important thing. Pray. Ask God, where do you want uh, me to lead the children that are in my care, or Sunday school, or whatever? What would you have me do, Lord? Um, and do you currently pray for missionaries or missions around the world? Um, I, I pray for several organizations and people groups that have come through that our church has adopted and worked on. The second is we need to prepare. Missions education doesn't happen very quickly. It is something that you have to m put intentional into your uh, education, into your, uh, your schedule, perhaps. You need to look at your calendar and say, where in my calendar for the year are we going to teach about missions? So you have to prepare for it. Um, more than even just preparing um, your calendar, you need to prepare and do a little research. You need to find out what, what, what missionaries are coming already to our church. Join, partner up with past, senior pastor or the missions board, whoever that might be, and say, hey, every time a missionary comes, send them my way. Hey, can I have their contact information? I want them to come and share a 10-minute window in my children's church. I want them to touch and see a foreign missionary. It's not just about doing the missions window and the service. You need to bring them in. They need to see tangibly the missionaries, too, as well. So have you prepared? Think it through. Who do I invite? How do I get them on the schedule? Um, those are important things. You need to prepare less as well and the last is promote it do you love missions we love children but do we really love missions and the, and and here's the thing is our heart is attached our hands are attached to the heart and we take we take action according to what is in our heart so if we are in love with God's mission which is people finding the Savior we will love missions and I as a children's pastor have struggled over the years 25 years weaving in and out, Boys and Girls Missionary Crusade, BGMC, learning all people all over the world to not doing it at all because it seemed like a bunch of busyness. So I've gone everywhere in between and I finally came today. I've, I prayed a long time and said, Lord, what can I share out of my 25 year journey that will help? I want to motivate you. I want to motivate me again to be more passionate about lost people. And it starts, I believe, in us and then our heart, our heart strings are attached, are going to move us. Our hands and our feet are going to take action to it. So here's how we do. Number two, we're going to lead by example. We're going to lead by example. We're going to say people matter to God. And that means it's going to, uh, it's going to affect how I, cho I choose to give my time and commitment in my children's the realm in which you were, if you're a Sunday school teacher, if you're a kids coordinator, if you're a Wednesday night coordinator, anywhere, missions can be taught if it's systematically. Perhaps it's just you going to your children's pastor and saying, or children's director and saying, I'd be committed, I'll, I'll lead up something once a month. I'll do it. Okay? So, so we have to give our time to it. Because I, I find that I'm really busy planning all the rest of the other curriculums, my Wednesday night, my Sunday morning. I am, I'm busy doing, uh, you know, asking God, what do my kids need? But if I don't believe that my kids need to hear about missions, then I'm fooling myself. Because I'm really not what God's heart is about. And it's more than just for missionaries. We're going to jump into that. It is that, but it is more than that. So we need to commit to it. Are you committed? I asked myself that, am I really committed to making it an a active part of my children's curriculum uh, for my kids' church, uh, for my children? And then third, some of you, how many of you have oodles of extra time to do this? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, so this the Lord gave me. You have to enlist people who are passionate about it. If there is no more of you and you're at the end of you, which I feel like sometimes I'm at the end of me, um, perhaps I need to enlist people who love missions. Maybe there's a missionary that's living right now in your church that, that's home from abroad or not on missions anymore, but they're missional. Maybe it's a person on the missions board. You know, they meet, but outside of that, and they plan for the convention, but outside of that, they're generally the people that are very passionate about missions. So go to one of them and say, would one of you come once a month and teach on missions? And I'll help you. I'll give you some tools to do that. So enlist passionate leaders. It could be a student. It could be a young person who's been called into missions. It could be a high school or college student that could come in with a silly puppet and teach, teach the children. It could, they could teach the preschoolers. They could teach the elementary. Because I guarantee you, the moment you put a high school or college student in front of uh, your kids, they're going to listen to them more than they, 
they listen to us. It's just how it works. They idolize them. And so it's really important that you enlist someone passionate about it. Fourth, you need to keep it really simple. If you are overwhelmed with the idea of um, traditional curriculums, there's so much out there on missions. I mean, it, you could teach them every week about missions. L literally, I looked online. There is enough content out there for you to teach uh, ongoing on missions. And so I, I looked at all that and I went, Lord, I just want to do something simple, and I'm going to incorporate it once a month with intentionality. I'm going to either have the missionary here or the missions project is before the people, before the kids. I'm going to either choose video this time. I'm going to choose a PowerPoint. I'm going to choose just put Buddy Barrel up there and remind them um, and get them to bring their barrels back. So I think we need to keep it simple. So you can look and dive into all the things, that the resources that I'm going to share with you, but find out what works for you and keep it really simple once a month. Get it on the calendar. Take, take baby steps, you know, and make it intentional. Um, perhaps there's a, a once a month cycle at your church like ours. We have a missionary in every month. Um, that's pastor's intention. He's very missions minded. Our, we support our budget for our missions is like 300000 or something like that. It is like incredible compared to even our annual budget. Our people give like generously to missions. And we have missionaries that have left from our church and go and come back all the time. Like they are in our pews just cycling through. So missions is a part of, of our church. And I thought, they're already coming. So I'll just say, Pastor, hey, can I have the email? Uh, or can I can put me in the direction? Who is this? Is it is it an Assembly of God missionary? Or is it a different kind of missionary? Or is it a missions project? Because I want to jump on board. Uh, where are we going uh, for some of this missions? That we're going to Burkina Faso. We're going to um, Kyrgyzstan. And we're going to Mexico. And so I'm like, OK, have those. Who's got a missionary? You know, So that our kids are praying for our missions teams going. Do what is already in the natural cycle of your church and join it. Join what is already happening so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The cycle might already be there. Or conventions or those traditional mission emphasis weeks that we have. Um, how Okay, you see pastor plans it, right? He's got it six months or a year out or maybe you pl plan farther than that. Um, but I can see ours is coming up in February. I'm like, okay, how can I do that in children's ministries? How can I do that in our kids? We're going to have missions emphasis. Pa and then you know what? The pastor gets all excited. He's like, oh, you're planning something too? I'm like, well, I see you have it on board. It's, a, it, it's his heartbeat. So I want to align our children's ministries to be what the flow of the church already is. I don't want to create my own thing. I want to I want to line up to what he's doing. So join with whatever the missions board, missions pastor, the cycle of the church. If there's nothing happen, pray. Go back to one. Pray, because there's got to be something happening for missions. Missions is the heart of God. And so uh, pray and ask the Lord to, maybe you're the spark that needs to happen. Hey, I'm going to get all missional pastor on you. No pun intended. I want, I want to be missional, and we need to have missionaries here, or we need to have a missions program. We need to do do something, and I, I guarantee he will, he will jump on board, and he'll be excited about it. Here's something. I'm going to blow some of your minds. Five, I want you to go on a missions trip. Go on a missions trip. And I hadn't gone for probably over 15 years. I hadn't gone on a missions trip. Um, uh, I went to Haiti. Um, I've gone to Mexico several times, but um, they put in the bulletin Cambodia, and I went bugs spiders heat all of the things i don't do and i went and the lord just said no no and i went okay and i'll tell you my life was changed i fell in love i pray for sparrow's nest in cambodia every day I talk almost every week <laughs> in our offering. BGMC is coming, and we're giving to Sparrow's Nest. And when you get up to $20, we're going to give you a Sparrow's Nest shirt. And we had Sparrow's Nest printed. And I, I came back from Cambodia more pumped up about missions. And I could wrap my, my head and my hands around a project. And you know what? We've kept that project almost two near years now. And our church gives $5. So we say, hey, you can get a coffee. And we're going to make a donation of your name if you visit the Welcome Center to Sparrow's Nest. And we give, really, a lot of money. Because <laughs> when the visitors come, we say, yep, and we sign them down. And we put a, na a donation in their name to Sparrow's Nest, $5. We give them a, ca a, coffee, to our, uh, a coffee card to our ca cafe, and we get, make a donation. We're spreading it at every area we have. Um, and that is really important. And so I just 
painted a sparrow's nest tree and I put a sparrow in there every time the kid gives 20 up to $20 so awesome i get so excited about it i just went home and started talking about sparrows nest all over and you know what i simply went on a missions trip and god took that and just wah, took my heart out and said it's not beating for me and put it back in you know in a, for missions for for the love for reaching people who don't know about jesus you want to ignite a fire underneath you go on a missions trip not to make that place better that's not why we go on a missions trip. I have to be honest. And I learned that. And Larissa Dobson, she was great at Sparrow's Nest. And she spoke. She goes, I don't want you to come and fix it, anything. I want you to come and simply love on kids. I want you to come. Because in so doing, your life will be impacted in such a dramatic way. You will not be the same, Doreen. And I'm like, yes! I'm not the same. And I'm begging. I want to go back so much. I want to go back. And I know God's timing for going back is going to be just perfect. Um, I'm waiting for my kids to want to go with me. That's what I'm really praying for. But, um, but then the Lord might speak to you and say, now I want you to go to Mexico. Or now I want you, I want you to be open to the idea of going on a missions trip. And go to your senior pastor and say, hey, the next missions trip that comes, uh, can you, would you consider me to go? For the pep, instead of a, instead of sending someone else, can I can I go <laughs> or or I'd like to join? You know, it's one of the two. Sometimes we have to rotate so not all of us are gone at the same time, and all the pastors can't go on a missions trip, and then there's no one home. <laughs> and so he's like, "Well, we're all going to rotate." You know, that's what I meant by that. And um, but perhaps if you've not gone, you should be the first to volunteer and sign up at information for that next missions trip that's coming out. If there's not a missions trip, find another church and partner with them. Someone else who's already doing it, say, can we join you? We'd like to have a team of us four or six come and join you. Um, because they're going to have all the plans. They probably have systems in place. I, I, I don't want to join uh, something if I, I can't experience it myself or have it be organized. So find another church that's doing it. And I know that there are churches that are doing it. Now, does it mean I have to go to a foreign country? No. You can also do a missions trip right in your neighborhood. And we call that, what, Compassion Ministries. We call it um, Acts of Compassion, World Vision. Oh, if you want to do a missions trip in your backyard, it's possible. Organize a group of your kids and take them on a missions trip. Have them be committed. Have them do the soup kitchen. Have them do something that's right across the street for them. Have them do an evangel. Have them do a school assembly in their school. And I'll guarantee you could do it. It's possible with God. If he sparks something in you, like, what could we do that could reach out to our community? God will show you. Partner with something that's already there. There's got to be a food bank. Auburn Food Bank's in our neighborhood. And let me tell you, it has massive amounts of people going through it. So instead of me doing my own thing, I said, let's go partner with them. And let's go feed. And their money is going to go farther because they're all connected with all the state agencies. So we partner with them. And we're doing an event called Serve Big. And we're going to go serve at their Thanksgiving dinner. And we're going to have more volunteers there, all in NFC shirts, all our church shirts, Kids, youth, adults alike, and they'll be serving at that. Last year when we served, someone said, boy, you sure have a lot of volunteers from your church here. <laughs> Somebody on the city council was like, yes, we're missional. We're passionate about people. They're like, wow, that's awesome. Get your kids involved in stuff like that. Have the kids serve at Trunk or Treat. It's not about them. Have the kids do a trunk. Have the kids do something. We just did trunk or treat, and we had several families that did it as a unit. And they didn't go around. They said, we're here to serve our community. It changes the mindset when it's not about them, but it's about serving others and reaching out, serving the community. So it can be around the world, and it can be across the street. But unless you're doing something, there, there's zero, zero connectivity to the heart for kids. They've got to do it and touch it and feel it for themselves. So do you. So sign up to the mission. You guys are looking at me kind of scary, huh? Mm -hmm. A missions trip with bugs and heat. Yes, I, I recommend it, okay? <laughs> and maybe not uh, heat and bugs, but maybe, you know, mice, snakes. Yes, <laughs> there were snakes. Yes, there were snakes there, and, and there was a lot of else things there. You know, there were the killing fields. I, I still uh, think about that. And I know that God will use those missions trips for you. So enough, uh, enough said. Got the message? Go on a mission trip. All right. You're laughing at me because Rochelle went with me <laughs> so she, she could see me in those elements. All right. Six, take kids on a missions trip. Now, this is possible. Youth with a mission does it all the time. Go as families. So our youth pastor came to me and he goes, well, we're going to go to Mexico, but all these parents want to go. And then they have younger siblings and they want to go. And I'm like, let them go. 
He's like, what? I said, it's not just about those youth, although they're going to be impacted. Allow their parents to go, but don't say you're coming as a chaperone. I said to him, I said, you should tell them they're going on a missions trip, and they just happen to be having two, their two buddies or the two youth that they're going to be with. Okay, so it's changing the mindset that we're not going just to watch kids do it. We're going to join in together and have whole families go. It will revolutionize, honestly, missions. They'll come back and go, I'll lead the missions for you. Great, awesome. And then you give them resources to do it. They'll come back missional. Plan something, even if it's across the street. Start somewhere. Look to agencies already in your community and plan something. Um, food banks. Okay, soup kitchens, um, clothing banks, uh, uh, there are just numerous things. There's even more things than that. Big brother, big sister programs. Lots of things that you can do in your community. Infiltrate your community. Then they're going to, in turn, people are going to find Jesus, and they're going to come back to the very church that, that pointed, the person that came from that church. We have, um, let me tell you a little story here. We have a school, I mean, directly across the street from us. It's Chinook. And um, I've been praying for almost two years, did nothing. We, I, I knew that the school was there, and I kept trying to think of what I could do to reach out to the school. And the Lord finally said, you need to adopt Chinook. And start small, start where you can. So I'm thinking adopting, like doing something every month, and, you know, just in, and the Lord said, no, <coughs> no, adopt them starts here. Starts with you praying for the school. Starts with you thinking of one thing to do. So we started with one thing. We started with the giving tree. We started taking names of the teachers had to filter out, and we took names, and we started giving a giving tree, like an angel tree type concept, to that school and that school alone. People would call in and we'd say, we do our own church kids that I have need, no, have need. I approach them. They don't approach me. There's no sign up for them. I just simply approach them, but I... I allow Chinook people to manage the list, and then they give it to our church, which is awesome because they know the kids that are on full assisted lunches. They know the kids. Um, so we, we did the angel tree. We are now doing up to about 75 gifts. Um, our congregation comes and brings to this tree. And I thought, oh, 20. I only want 20 the first year. And they were gone. Like one service, they were gone. I'm like... And so I called back the counselor and I said, I need 20 more. <laughs> so, so the next week there's 20 more and the next week there's 20 more. We did 60 one year. We did 75 last year. Um, and she already had 60 kids sign up uh, for it. And we're going to be doing that again. And I'm just really excited about that. And then it just branched out from there. Now we're doing a, a Christmas brunch for the teachers. And here's what a, a new testimony. Last month the teacher said, uh, a family came in and said, oh, we're looking for church. She said, oh, you can go to that church across the street. They do a lot of things with kids. Here's an unsaved person, you know, pointing <laughs> to the church across the street because we're slowly infiltrating. We're serving the teachers. And then we started with the Auburn Food Bank, and we said, hey, how can, and they said, hey, why don't you do backpacks? And so Miss Diane here, she's awesome. Every Wednesday she comes, and she loads 20 or so backpacks of food for weekends. So the kids who have latchkey kids who have no parents on the weekend can have food. So they're packing granolas and instant soups and all sorts of things in these backpacks. So we added that. And every year we just keep adding a little bit more. Then we added Linda Han. And we went over and actually painted and cleaned the facility. And that didn't happen the first two or three years. And then we added that. And then, I, and then now I want to do a school assembly so I, uh, on bullying. And so I'm like, and then another face. And then every time now, and now I meet with a principal about every three months, and I went in and I said, and she goes, oh, you got to sit here, you got to sit here. So I'm, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and it's like in this glass bubble, like it's glass on all sides. And I sat in, in there, and I'm like, okay, I'm in the principal's office, this is terrible. Recess got out, all these kids come flooding by the glass door. And they're like, <laughs> chill this pastor sitting in the principal's office, it was awesome. And she goes, I did that on purpose. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> she, I said, I'm not in trouble, am I? She goes, no, but she goes, but that was really fun to watch. She says, so many of the kids knew you. She says, I know that you guys are making a difference across the street. And they let us pass out flyers and do all sorts of things. That's just a school, and that's a, literally across the street. Where is there the closest school to you? It has all the families in it. You could do kid mail at that school, and all the families are going to get that mail of the church nearby or the church in the community. Make a difference. Find ways. Just beat on doors and pray. Go back to number one. Pray and ask the Lord to show you some different things. Take kids on a missions trip 
or enlist their help to do it because they are the future missionaries. They're the future missionaries. And if we don't allow opportunities, there's not the, the, the decrease of the call of missions goes down. So as the leaders lead, God, God's got to, he's got to be creative, I'm sure. He's like thumping on us today. He's thumping on me. And Pastor Brent, when he said, I want you to teach on this, and I want you to light a fire under them, he goes, because there's not enough missions and even being, education being taught in our churches. And I have missionaries and U.S. missionaries as friends, and they say, you know what? The hardest thing is we're turned down and we're turned down and we're turned down because of finances, because of lack of open doors, too many missionaries with too much need. And you know what? The Bible says about what the Great Commission. Unless everybody hears, I'm not coming back. I'm, I'm withholding my return until every nation, every person hears. We need more missionaries. We have to be open to it. And we need more missionaries that are sitting right in front of us in our classes. And we need to be passionate about missions because if we are not, they aren't. They follow what we're passionate about. So I want you to get passionate. Come on, show me a little ounce of like, woo! Okay, come on. Take kids on a missions trip. But here's the last thing, number seven. Teach children to be missionaries across the street Teach them about the mission of God. Do your children know how to share their faith? Do, the, do your children know the ABCs of salvation? Admit, believe, confess. Do they know how to share maybe perhaps the wordless book? I got some little pictures there. I, 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 I went to Cambodia and the Lord said, go, go back to the wordless book, that old little cardboard book. And I'm like, really, Lord? That's just so basic. And that's what we shared in the gravel <laughs> with children. We just remember in the gravel. <laughs> Sitting on a tarp. Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember lots about Cambodia. And uh, we're sharing literally on a tarp. And there are children at my feet mocking me. There were a few. A few of them probably didn't know anything what I was saying. And I know Voon was translating for us. And, um, and a few of them were playing with something unmentionable <laughs> around their toes. And I'm like, but they need Jesus. They need Jesus. And so I just shared Jesus. I just shared Jesus. The way to Jesus, the hope of Jesus, growing in Jesus, pointing them to Jesus, that Jesus was real. And it can be for you as well. Teach the kids how to share Jesus. They will not be missionaries if they don't have the heart or the passion or the know-how. And kids want to learn how. One year, we, um, I taught a curriculum called Missions 316. Love it. And um, I did it at camp, and then I rewrote it and did it again, and then I rewrote it. And then some of those tips are here in the book and the next, and the next page and the back page that I'm going to share with you. And we bought the little bracelets with the different color beads. And the kids, by the end of the week, could share the full gospel of Kids Camp. They could share the gospel with scriptures. Um, uh, where they are. And we do that about once a year in Kids Church. I give them a little heart book that has the color, the wordless book, and I have them pin it to their, their shirt, their jacket, or their backpack. Um, I just Every year, I just send something home with the wordless book on it. Sometimes it's on their backpack, just a string of colors. Sometimes it's for their shoes. It's awesome, you know, if it's on your shoe every day and you're seated on your tennis shoe, well, okay, that's what that is. And you, it's just a tool for students. Kids want tools, and they want a visual. It's pretty hard to share Jesus. How many have ever asked your kids, how many of you are afraid to talk about Jesus in your, church, in your school? Every hand goes up. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. You know, do we equip our kids with how to share the mission of Jesus? So I find that that to be very important. They need to know, what do you say? How do you introduce Jesus? We even have them get in partners and, and practice saying what they would say. Um, what if they ask you a hard question? Do you have to have the answer for that? You might say, no, I don't know the answer. But come to church and you'll find out. Why don't you come to church with me? You know, give them tools to help them be excited about being evangelists because really they're called to be about the mission of God. Um, another thing is that teach them not all the ABCs in the wordless book, but also allow opportunities and teach them about missions that perhaps God might be calling you to go somewhere else. Maybe it's not all the way to Africa, but maybe it's to tribal Indians down on the plains. Maybe it's to deepest dark uh, Alaska. Honestly, it's dark up there. It's cold and the polar frost freezes. And we have a gal from our church, our, our building manager, Mark Johnson, has a daughter named Alyssa. And she said, I am called to be a teacher 
But God's called me back to Alaska, to this tiny little village. And I said, Alyssa, Alyssa God's calling you to be a missionary. And she's like, oh, I, I think that's what it is. I mean, like, they might not have water this week. By Friday, they thought they might have water. All of the <laughs> place is frozen. The, the people, you know, for lack of a better term, are like hicks, you know. They've just grown up so much in this tiny little village that they can't see out. And they've lost hope. She led Daisy to the Lord. She's led Daisy's family to the Lord. She's winning one at a time. She's been there now almost three years. She has to get on a plane that gets on another plane that gets on a plane that gets on a, uh, what do you call a snowmobile? Like they dropped her off in the middle of what, a plane of ice. And she just waited for 15 minutes. And you're not supposed to be out there more than 30 minutes. You freeze to death, right? You know, she's got three layers of parkas until the snowmobile became pulled up and said, I hear you're our new teacher. Get in the back. <laughs> That's being a missionary to me. I mean, in my mind, you know, she's going, she's got her degree in teaching, but she's being a missionary where she's at. She grew up at Northwest Family Church and loves kids and loves telling about Jesus. Tell those stories. Those are people they know. Use people they know to share about Jesus. Invite those missionaries in. And that, here's some tools. When you invite the missionary in, I'm going to share a few tips here now. So if you turn to the other side, the, the second side, there's all these tips that I provided for you. I'm going to jump around. I'm going to be a little random because that's my personality. But I want to just share a bunch of heart things because I think these are doable things that you can do in your church. And you can go ahead to the last one because I want you to be thinking about this. What is one thing that you're doing in your children's ministries that you absolutely love that really works? I want you to be thinking about that because I want to have you share it here in just a minute. If you have missionaries come, what do they say? Do you just say, come and share a missionary window? Mm, that's, that's a big parameter. Number one, do a little research. <laughs> Get online. Find out what they're, what they're good at. You know, maybe Some missionaries are teaching in a university. And it's really hard for them to relate to, you know, kindergarten through fifth grade. So I developed a little tool, and I'm, I wish I would have inserted his. I have a little, little uh, email that I send them, and I'll say, hey, here are some ideas on how to communicate missions to our kids. I said, number one, tell us how God called you into ministry. So that's the first thing. Number one, I want you to say, how did God call you to do this? Yeah. And you know what? I'm, I'm literally, 98% of them <laughs> were in elementary or younger elementary kids these be well i was at kids camp or i was in kids church and we had a missionary and that's how it happened so invite the missionary to share their story and have the missionary what's really cool is have the missionary bring tangible items bring tangible items kids want to touch and feel and see uh the culture in which they are have them bring a powerpoint say can you bring a powerpoint or a video clip bring something that they can see where you're at even a picture of a map. So a map, like a full world map with you big dot where you're at. So they can see where Seattle is and where you are at, okay? A big map to where they're, where they're going, okay? Then I said, that fourth thing, I want you to speak that language. Use that language in something. To, they can teach them a song. They can say, Jesus loves you. Um, you know, pray in it. Uh, 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 you know, using that foreign language. I ask them to uh, bring their spouse if they're, or their kids. If they have kids, I say, oh, if you have kids, bring your kids. Because mm -hmm. nothing impresses them more than a kid their age. Wow, they're on, you're on the mission field? You're a kid. Yep, God's using me on a mission field, and this is what it looks like. Have them share. Have them share a testimony of how BGMC or whatever project, maybe perhaps your church is helping, like Sparrow's Nest, we call it Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge, and they give them their barrels, but I know that I'm giving it to Sparrow's Nest. That's what our project is, and the kids all know that. But they give in their barrel, which is a great tool. Find a bank. Get a Pringles can. Have them fill it up. You have a year goal to fill that Pringles can to the top. <coughs> And wrap on your missions project on it. Get a M and M. Have you ever seen the M and Ms that are in those plastic? They're quarter. They're perfect for a quarter. Have the M and M challenge. Do it every month. Fill up your your M and M challenge. You fill up your little quarter bank. Find a bank. Find a tool. It's a visual. Kids need visual. Okay. 
Um, I think we used to use uh, little boxes. I think we've had little church boxes. Little preschoolers, they all know any different. If you have preschool kids, have it, it has to be something tangible that they're putting their money in, that they bring that up and they dump it out and then they bring it back. Have you ever seen, um, maybe some of you have been around in children's ministry, they used to have a Buddy Barrel. He had a weight scale on it. Weight scale, I don't know what it is, but do that. Have missions be a part of your vacation Bible schools. Have missions be a part of some summer outreach thing that you're doing. Because even though it's an outreach, the kids come and they go, oh, I can give to others. It's not about them. It's helping our kids see out the lost, compassion, giving. Pick a missionary. You know, we often pick uh, missionaries with Speed the Light to give them a car. Um, one year we had... Um, an awesome U.S. missionary, and I said, what can we buy you? <laughs> and it was Pastor Denise. She's a U.S. missionary, and she says, well, I need stamps and gas cards. I'm traveling everywhere, and I'm trying to communicate to people. Our kids went out and brought stamps and gas cards as offerings. It can be creative, tangible things instead of this big ominous bank. Sometimes that's like, okay, that's just money. What do I do? Uh, we have projects where we give to the kids, where we have them go do, go and do, um, not car washes, but they go and do chores. Say, why don't you ask your parents that you could do two extra things you don't normally do, and you take all that money and that goes into missions. If they give to it, their heart strings are attached to it even much more. They have to sacrifice for it. And I don't think we sacrifice enough. I was challenged even when I was doing this. I don't sacrifice enough, Lord, to the mission of God, to giving to me. Are you giving faithfully to missions or to a missions project? Not a one-time thing, but a pledge. Because I believe that if we pledge, that it, 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 it may, it's a commitment on our behalf to the mission of God, to a missions project or a missionary. Entertain the missions. Then afterwards, okay, so you have the missionary come. You're all excited about it. Have the missionary say, Pastor, I know our missions board or pastor likes to take the missionary. I just say, can I, can I join you? <laughs> and I drag my kids with me because I want my kids to be around the missionaries because your kids are around church all the time. If you have kids with you serving, bring them too. What are they going to hear? They're going to be touching and experiencing a missionary who's living the life for God. And it's got ups and it's got downs. And they need to hear all that. Okay, bring kids with you. Have the kids host the, 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 the missionary for lunch. It, beyond sharing something visual, I get to, they, they eat lunch too. <laughs> they, they wash their hair and they <laughs> had to get dressed and they were early and they had to drive there and hear their stories. M missionaries often have stories of faith. I want that spoken over my kids. I want it spoken over my life. And it only fuels my fire even greater to have that missionary with me. I love having a missionary come. So I had it down there. Entertain the missionary in your home and invite them to lunch. And, or you join them. Choose to build or buy even. It says right there. It says choose to build or buy your house with that in mind. I found that online. I went... Remember how the, he, she said, I built this spot just for the prophet of God? Remember? I can't remember what I, I was. Um, Elijah. Yeah, Elijah. And he says, I built this, this, this side room. Anytime you're in the neighborhood, it's just for you. Do you know that missionaries come on furlough and the hardest part is finding a place to belong? They Finding a place that they have to rent. Wouldn't it be cool if you have the finances or you have a mother-in-law place to say, Pastor, you go up to Pastor anytime there's a missionary here, as soon as they're coming home on for a little, or go to the network and say, I have a mother-in-law place or a, a side place. I, I, we ha it's fully functional. They can come because li literally they probably won't be there very much because they travel a lot, but it's a place to call home for them. Wouldn't that be awesome? I want to stir it up in you. I want you to be excited about hospitality towards missionaries because they're going to in turn what happened to uh, when when he had elijah in his house the blessing came on his house the blessing came on the house and um they were ever ha able to have a child i mean it's just the blessing is there here are some other tools encourage your parents to do that and to pray for missionaries too as well Send home stuff with the parents once a month when you have a missionary endeavor. Send home information about the missionary and all that kind of stuff. Those are very, that's very, very, very important. Very important. How much time do we have, Jenny? I want to make sure I've got enough time. <laughs> You'll give me the five minutes. All right. Sounds great.
Sorry. Um, okay. There's an emergency outside, okay. so nobody can leave the building yet. Okay, so sounds great. Um, and when you do leave for lunch, you have to go to the west side of the, the parking lot because the, the main exit side is blocked. Okay, so sounds great. Yeah. We'll do. All right, just want to make sure. I uh, can see activity, so I'm like, am I late? I don't think so, but I want to check. All right. So I would like to encourage you to send stuff home with parents, okay? Not a ton of stuff. How many of you have children that come home with lots of stuff from school? And the kid mail is endless. And it is endless at my house. I'm sorting through backpacks and trying to decide, is this important? I don't know if this is important. Is this important? Is this important? I mean, it is, it's a floodgate at home for parents, okay? I'm a, I'm a mom. I get it. And so what I ask is if you send something home once a month and put it on cardstock, or put it, in such a, put it in such a nice way that they're going to want to keep it. Or if you are a future planner, the next six months, these are the, thing, these are the three missionaries that are going to come. And off the off months, we're going, to be taking, we're going to be doing a missionary blah, blah, blah. So that you're planning and you're casting a vision. I'll tell you, if it's something that's a booklet with a calendar on it that tells me, and, then it could ha and a magnet on the back of it, guess what every mother's going to do? Boop, right on the refrigerator. I'm going to remember those things that you want me to remember. If you equip the parents to do it, I think a lot of times parents don't feel equipped because we haven't taken the time to go, what would a mom need? <laughs> or what would a dad, a single dad, we have a single dad. And you know what he says to me? He goes, every time you do those bookmarks, those are the best things. He goes, I just put that right on the refrigerator. And he goes, I, I know what's coming up. I know the Christmas thing. I sent home it. And use your check-in system. We have a kid check. I email out through the kid check reminders. And I'm going to do this for missions. This is, came to me this, this last week when I was doing this. I'm going to send out a reminder. Hey, don't forget to have your kids bring their barrels on Sunday. Because a lot of kids just forget. It's just the li life is information and busyness overload. So what is going to make that parent look at what you have? Is it excellent? Is it communicate clearly? Is it simple? Okay, so they want to they respond. Don't get me wrong. I'm a mom. I want to respond. But you are overwhelming me. Junior, I have a junior hire, high schooler, all the information that's coming. And then I, 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 I simply said to the kids, you need to advocate for the thing that you need to return back. So I often tell the kids, make sure you're begging your parents, hey, mom, dad, let's put the barrel by the front door before we leave so I won't forget it. And, and teach the kids to have a passion. And I, here's the thing. Once they've been on a missions trip of any kind, they'll be passionate about it. They'll be less likely to, to lose it. Here's something else that I, I, I forgot to mention about that that I do want to say. Go on a missions trip every two to three years. I am feeling it. Like vision leaks, right, over time, and inspiring, compassionate moments wane over time. Our hearts wane over time. Children's hearts wane over time. How much information have they heard and seen in the last four weeks, overload, and, and their hearts are just constantly trying to stay afloat to what is important. Is the mission of God important? It is so important, and it gets drowned out by the busyness of life. So the tools that you send at home and how much you inspire the kids by having them be involved in missions and missions projects, having them do something special for the missionary coming. Plan and foresight. I know that Miss Mary Larissa's coming, and she's got three kids. So I did my homework. I know she has three kids. And I remember when we went, I wasn't on my radar, but Drusy, one of the gal on our team, she had packed clothes and their favorite snacks and their treats and M&Ms, because I guess, you know, chocolate, what was it, peanut butter, Reese's peanut butter cups. Everybody wanted those over there. And so she did her research on what they wanted before we even went before we even went to Cambodia. It's the same true. When they're coming to your church, do you know if they have kids? Wouldn't it be really cool if you took a special offering and gave that kid, hey, here's a gift card for Toys R Us. Go buy yourself a toy. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, <laughs> and even children, yeah, children, well, children's missionaries need that too because they go buy trinkets and toys to do their games with. But do you know what? It would speak volumes. Or a clothing store. Walmart. Even just a Walmart card that says, you have kids, will you, I, I, even if they don't come, give to the missionary a card that says, we know you have kids, will you give the passes on to them? And you know what? <coughs> Here's the final thing you do before those missionaries leave. Love on them, dote on them, because you're going to get all excited about doing that. Because when you give, guess what happens? You get back. But it looks differently, okay? When the missionaries leave, I say, right, Miss Diane, come on here, you're going to be my illustration. I say, every missionary, 
stop. They're like, they're about to get on stage. Oh, wait a minute. I have them step down in the front, and I invite all the children. I said, come on, let's gather around. The Bible says we lay hands, and we're going to bless. We're going to pray that God gives this missionary what they need. If they're at the end of their money, they need $3,000. Boys and girls, who's going to pray for those $3,000? I'm telling you, the kids at first, the first year I was at NFC, they're all like, I'm not going down there. <laughs> you know? And I just kept calling them front, calling them front, because we want the kids to what? Learn the prayer of faith, praying in faith, pray for the missionaries, call them down front. Anytime someone shares in kids' church, I call them down front, and I have the kids tangibly pray, not just Pastor Doreen, but I have them pray for the missionary. Thank and they Mr. come with their hands willing, not... <laughs> It's, yes, it's so much different now. They'll come praying. What? We changed a culture. Changed a culture. It took a long time. I don't know how many of you have ever gone new into a children's ministry and they all just look at you, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you're new, you're different, you're singing weird, and, you know, because it's the culture of you, but it also is changing the spiritual culture in which you want. So do you want a spiritual culture of missions? I do. I want that. I want it in every... I want it in my Wednesday night club. I want it in my Sunday school. I want it in my kids' church. Little kids can learn. Preschoolers love touching a globe and seeing a person, in a, you know, and t eating foods and all that kind of stuff. They love that. Do it at all ages. I have a little more time, so I'm going to share one more thing. Teach your children to be world Christians. Don't expose them to only the American perspective on the news or realities around the world. How many believe the news? I thought that. So we watch the news, and, and, you know, if it's a storm, obviously we can believe that's happening, but I can't believe all of the things or the perspective of what you see on television. And a lot of kids see the world through the, the lens of the news, and that might not be really what it's about. So back up and find video resources about what's really happening around the world. So look at the last page. I'm going to give you some resources um, to help you. These are these. These, to me, are some of the best of the best. Okay, I spent about two or three weeks researching. I'd spend, like, not every day, but I'd go online, and I'd look for a while. Uh, no, that's not the best. And I, until I came down, I narrowed it down to these. There are probably more. If you spent more time, you're going to research, and the best always surfaces, right? So I checked their statement of faith. I checked to make sure that I could even recommend you to look. But obviously, you need to look for yourself and judge it for yourself. Uh, StandForKids.org, Missions for Kids, is a missions curriculum that's free <laughs> for you to use. That's graphics, and it's got cool things, and it's just <coughs> teaching the kids what it is to be on the mission of God as well ac around the world and across the street. Love that. World Watch, the disciplezone.com is for teachers. And it comes up with a place around the world for the kids uh, to be able to have, and it's video clips. I love it. Uh, the, uh, this is a missionary Baptist association, the net backpack. Simple, simple lessons on what is missions. What is God's heart in relationship to missions? How can you be on a mission? How can you be a missionary? So there's missions and missionary. There's, it's a different. The mission of God, all of us are a part of. Missionary across the world, foreign missions. Missionary across the street, the kid, you. Okay, so there's different types of missions, and they nailed it. Some of the things, that are the basic basics of missions, I loved it. Torch lighters, missions video series, wow. My kids love that. It's definitely elementary, probably not early childhood, because it definitely has, you know, it even has some of the torch lighters have the martyrs uh, and all that type of stuff. So you have to always watch a movie before you show it. But the torch lighters have the missionaries and their stories which is really neat for you, and it's visual. Thekidsprayer.com for the 1040 window. Do you know that in the 1040 window, they have, it's just amazing research that we found on the 1040 window, the, and they have a whole, like, it, it's the thumb thing, Muslims, and it's where the most Muslims are, the most poverty is are, the most children are, are in the 1040 window. And if you don't know about the 1040 window, that's where you start. Teach the children there are lost in droves. Millions do not know Jesus. Now, our responsibility is to share the gospel. It's, it's the Holy Spirit's job to do the calling, right? We're not doing the saving. So we're trying to say, we need to get the gospel out. We need to get the gospel out. How can we partner with others, or how can we do it ourselves? And that, that kidsprayer.com teaches kids how to pray for people around the world. 
And that stirs up missions and missionaries in the kids' hearts. Mission Zone, Kidology. How many know what Kidology.com is? K-Org. It's a great resource for every children's worker. has way more than missions on it. You want to subscribe to Kidology.com. Okay? It is the most amazing research. For top phenomenal children's pastors and leaders drop cur whole curriculums information and resources on there you have to subscribe to get all they'll give you a few but you have to subscribe to get all of the rest of them and it is worth it is worth it like you were ooed and wowed by logos you will be way ubered wowed and by by, by kidology if you're working with kids so that's a resource and then there's some other things there there's bible visuals bgmc okay and wycliff has a great great missions program for kids so i want to encourage you Get on board with, just even if you did one of these. Okay, don't be overwhelmed by the 10. Say, so where can I start this week? I'm going to go home, look it out on my desk, and I want to pick something. I want to start somewhere. Um, and, and I'm not opposed to our own Boys and Girls Missionary Crusade, the Assemblies of God missions, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. There's so much content. So start simple. Find what works best for you. And ask God, where can I start this week? There are some book resources, too, as well, um, that will just motivate you and move you. And read. Be a student. He said, grow. This is, part, this is one of the areas God wants you and me. I'm talking to me, okay? When I did this, my Lord's talking to me. <laughs> I need to grow more in the area of missions because who knows, but the next Billy Graham is sitting in your chairs, in your, on your floor, in front of you, and God wants you to equip them with missions resources. He wants you to be open and, and also have altar times. We're so busy, we don't have altar times with our own kids. The Holy Spirit is not this in and out burger, okay? He is like, come and soak up for a few minutes. Do you have intentionality prayer times with your kids? It can be in a moment, but I found that it's when we seek the Lord, seek the Lord, turn on the altar music, call the kids once a month when the missionary comes say boys and girls we're going to spend a few moments and we're going to pray for the missionary we just did and we're going to pray for them and we're going to pray for the mission of God and I'm going to pray boys and girls how many of you feel like maybe the, perhaps that God might be speaking to you to do this very thing because if you're not listen, if you're not helping the kids tune their ears to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to them about and having a response time because we so are the McDonald's generation, like way beyond. Like we are now so technology, it goes in and out. It's just flowing so fast that they don't sit and wait. So I want to encourage you also, have opportunities of prayer time and devotion time with your kids to respond. If we have no response time, will there be a response? If we have no response time. All right. We have just a moment. I want to take your best idea. If you think, like, this is something that was awesome that worked in our church on missions. Anybody have some thoughts? Something motivational. Be bold. Yes, Emily. <coughs> we did a missions night where we had a missionary come in and talk to our kids. And we divided our Wednesday night so that we had half an hour for the missionary to speak. And then we did stations. So we took the country he was from. We did a food. We did a game. We did a craft. And then we um, went back and let them ask questions that they had kind of thought about to the missionary, and it was great. The missionaries wonderful. loved it. Tangible. Yes, yeah, for tangible. Kids. The kids had a blast, and the missionaries it's even wonderful. thought it was great. It's wonderful. Anyone else? Yep. Uh, this isn't anything new, but uh, Shoebox Ministries is yep. huge. As far as getting mm -hmm. the kids involved, putting the shoebox together for someone else across the world. The other thing, too, is that we do Ziploc bags, a gallon Ziploc bag, and you can fit so many things in that, and that's good for local missions. Yep. Toothbrush, yep. soap, you yep. know, prayer card, yep. whatever. That's great for even local missions. Going that is wonderful. The that is wonderful. Yeah, our food bank does the same thing. Put soap, toothpaste, toothbrush. It's not just for homeless people. It's, it's for people that can't even buy those things, you know, so it's great right now. Um, back in Texas, we... We used to do, um, it was like a monthly, almost bi-weekly thing. We had something called Love Brownsville. So we would do a lot of across the street kind of stuff. We would go to the projects and we had, Brownsville, Texas is the poorest city in the nation. It is the poorest. And we will go every two weeks and just love on them. We had people go cut hair, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And we will do that. We will just spread that every two weeks. We will go and just pour love on people so that awesome. maybe they didn't have a chance to get a haircut or 
their lawn needed to be mowed and they're in a wheelchair or whatever, the ramp broke, we will go and just fix it. I mean, people would just awesome. go and do that. And out of that, it, something that sprung out was doing missions. And we always had so, many, so much response because we created that culture of, it's okay, you don't have to go across the world. You can just go to the parts that are right across the street and make it happen. That's great. And that's, that's great. something that I loved. That's great. Anybody else? Sheriff's hot and burning, yep. I go to a predominant uh, Filipino church. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we just did last month before the whole earthquake happened was we had partnered with one of our pastor's mentors that he knows who does a school in the Philippines. In the Philippines. And mm. we actually did Backpack of Hope, which is we did backpacks full of school stuff and just like clothing or whatever we thought that the kids could use awesome. for the six, 60 of the poorest kids in the school. Wow, that's neat.